nine, Wittberg, two minutes. Yeah, can you just please find Wittberg? Yeah, two minutes. Can you find Start of year one, we granted 200 share appreciation rights to each of our 100 staff. All of these rights vest after two years, subject to the staff remaining employees. They do not get the cash bonus if they leave, so they only vests after two years. It's not anticipated that any staff would leave. It's not anticipated anyone would leave. But in fact, during the second year, 10 staff did leave, but you wouldn't have known that in the first year. We now have the fair value of each share appreciation right as follows. Compute the liability and compute the expense in the financial statements for the two years of the scheme. I will do the first year. I hope you will do the second year. When I'm going to do the first year, I'm going to line up four numbers. I'm going to work out the value of the share appreciation right at the year end. Options grant date, options grant date, options grant date. Share appreciation rights are liabilities, so it's the year end. So I want the year end liability here. I will need to know how many of those I think are going to be qualifying. So I'll look at my year-end estimate of the numbers. I'll then look at my time lapse. And then the fourth thing will be the answer, which will give me my year-end liability. So the first thing that I need to know is my year-end, my year-end fair value of the share appreciation right. Now, obviously, fair values, these things have to be given to you. So at the end of the first year, the fair value of the share appreciation right is 10. But you are not giving one share appreciation right to one person. Each person is effectively getting 200. So potentially, what we're looking at is giving a $2,000 bonus to each member of staff. I also need to know the current estimate of the numbers of staff that I think will qualify. Now I'm at the end of year one. How many staff did I originally grant the how many staff did I originally grant the share appreciation rights to? 100. Have any of them left? No, not yet. Do I think any of them are going to leave? No. So at the end of year one, my mentality is, I think, yeah, all 100 are going to be there. Now you could, if you wanted to, multiply by 100 here and then make that a percentage. But I'm just quite happy, yeah, dealing with the current estimate. Now in terms of the time lapse, it is a two-year scheme and we are one year into the two-year scheme. So this will represent my year-end liability. This will represent my year-end liability. So let me just, yeah, take it gently. 10 times 200 times 100 divided by 2 is giving me a nice round 100,000. So my year-end liability is 100,000. The way I work things out, I need to look at the brawl forward, but it is my first year, so there is no brawl forward. I simply need a liability of 100. Because I need a liability of 100, there needs to be an expense of 100. So my profit and loss account expense is the increase in the liability. For the avoidance of any doubt, 
Let me repeat, that is my balance sheet, that is my non-current liability, that is my P&L, that is my expense. The elements are a liability and the elements are an expense. And if you want the double entry, you're debiting P&L, you're charging it as an expense, it's 100,000, and you are crediting the liability, you're crediting the liability, at 100,000. So that forms the basis of the double entry. I've done year one. I'm hoping you can do year two. So let me be quiet for two minutes. Let me give you the opportunity of working out the expense that will be charged in year two. This number will be different. This number will be different. This number will be different. The share appreciation, right? It's all about the year end. 